Let's begin by looking at exponential equations. I know we all understand that x here is the exponent, but we should also understand that a is called the base. Um, you probably learned that vocabulary way back at the beginning of your algebra career, but probably have forgotten that word because we don't use it all that often. But we will be using the word base a whole lot now. Let's begin graphing by looking at the graph of y equals 2 to the x. When you are graphing this, the x is obviously in the exponent position, and so we've got to treat it as such. Let's let x be 2. 2 to the second power is equal to 4. If x is 1, 2 to the first power is 2. Anything to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the negative first is 1 half. And 2 to the negative second is 1 fourth. Let's plot these points here, beginning with 2, 4, 1, 2, 0, 1, negative 1, 1 half, negative 2, 1 quarter. Basically, our graph is going to barely approach the x-axis on the left and just go up, up, up on the right. This is the general look of any exponential function, and I'd like to highlight a couple of points. First off, I'd like to highlight this point, 0, 1. Your standard exponential graph will go through that point. We also have the point 1, 2. But instead of saying 1, 2, I'm going to write down 1, base. Because if our graph was 3 to the x, it would go through 1, 3 and be a steeper graph. If it was y equals 4 to the x, it would go through 1, 4. Now, notice on the left, we do not ever touch the x-axis. 2 to a negative power will get smaller and smaller, but it will never become 0. We say that this horizontal line that we're approaching is called a horizontal asymptote, A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. It has a silent P in there. Now let's also look at the domain here. The domain is going to be all real numbers, and the range, not including the 0, will go on up to positive infinity. And I'd like to call attention to that because we're going to compare this in a little while with the logarithmic graph. Now let's take a look at y equals 1 half to the x power. Now this is a little bit different, but kind of the same thing. If I have a negative 2 exponent, 1 half to the negative 2, I get 1 to the negative 2 and 2 to the negative 2 power. That's actually going to give us 4. Negative 1 will give us an output of 2, 0 an output of 1, 1 an output of 1 half, and 2 an output of 1 quarter. Very similar to the numbers we had in the previous graph, except sort of reversed. Our graph this time is going to be negative 2, 4, like that. Negative 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 1 half, and 2, 1 quarter. So you can see that we have the previous graph just reflected across the y-axis. Now let's look at how to convert exponential equations into logarithmic equations and vice versa. Let's say we had log base 5 of 25 is equal to 2. Notice I use the word base here. There's a relationship here that says 5 the base to the second power over there is equal to 25. 5 squared is equal to 25. Those are the same equation. The one on the right is what we're used to looking at, exponential form, but what we have on the left is a logarithmic form of the same equation. Let's do another one. Let's say we have log base 3 of 1 ninth is equal to negative 2. In exponential form, this would be 3 to the negative second power is equal to 1 ninth. Notice that I'm drawing this arrow here. I'd like to call this the visual property. There's not really a name for this other than how to convert back and forth between a logarithmic and exponential function. But calling it the visual property because you just kind of see it makes sense. Let's look at a third example. Log base 10 of 10,000 is equal to 4. In exponential form, that would be 10 to the fourth power is equal to 
10,000. So logarithms are not anything to be super scared of. They're basically just exponential equations. They're just the same thing, but written a little bit differently. A logarithm is an inverse of an exponent. Now, let's say instead I've got 2 to the 4th is equal to 16. Now we have to kind of go backwards and train our brain a little bit somehow. What I like to do is the following. I like to say log base something of something equals something. And then I still use that same process there and I say here's my base 2, there's my 4th power, there's my 16 inside the argument of the logarithm.